evening. So now to our other top story of the night, some fireworks on Capitol Hill as lawmakers demanded answers from the top officials at the FBI and the Department of Justice. FBI Director Christopher Wray and Deputy Attorney General Rod Rosenstein fielded a series of pointed and fiery questions from House Republicans today trying to get to the bottom of how their agencies handled the Clinton email investigation and then subsequently the Russia probe that they began. Watch this. I am the Deputy Attorney General of the United States. Okay. You're the boss, Mr. Rosenstein. That's, that's correct. Why did you tell Peter Strzok not to enter our questions yesterday? But I didn't give Peter Strzok any instructions. Horowitz said his bias is the is an appropriate explanation for his conduct. Do you agree? I certainly agree with the findings of the Inspector General report, and I think those messages clearly do indicate bias. We need a date when you found out that the wife of your deputy was working for people who are actively trying to undermine President Trump. If you have evidence of wrongdoing by any member of the Trump camp camp campaign, present it to the damn grand jury. Whatever you got, finish it the hell up, because this country is being torn apart. Here now, Florida Republican Congressman Matt Gates, among those demanding answers in that hearing today. Congressman, good to see you here in Florida. Good to see you. So uh, I watched as much as I could this morning before we started getting ready for the debate of this hearing, and it was, it was pretty heated in there. What do you think was accomplished today? We learned that Rod Rosenstein won't tell us whether or not he even read the FISA application that resulted in spying on officials associated with the Trump campaign. And I think there's a real transition that occurred today. This is going from just being Robert Mueller's probe to a probe that Rod Rosenstein is responsible for because he's ultimately who appointed Mueller. And so the staffing decisions that demonstrate bias, the accountability, kind of the cleanup of people like Peter Strzok and Lisa Page should fall to Rosenstein. And we didn't get the answers we wanted to. Today. Let's take a listen to uh, Representative Jordan. He's pressing Rosenstein over the releasing of documents, which I know has been top of mind for all of you. Watch this part. The House of Representatives is going to go on record saying you haven't complied with requests from a separate and equal branch of government, that you haven't complied with subpoenas, and you got seven days to get your act together. And I want to know why you won't give us what we've asked for. Sir, I certainly hope that the, your colleagues are not under that impression. That is not accurate, sir. And you it is accurate. We have caught you hiding Mr. Chairman, can we Mr. allow Rosenstein. the witness to I mean, how do you square that? Well, there have been a number of circumstances where we found documents that were responsive to the requests from Congress, but they weren't produced to us. So that was deeply troubling. Uh, also, I think you've seen Mr. Jordan's frustration bubble beyond just a small group of members on the Judiciary Committee to now the entire House of Representatives taking a vote and virtually every Republican saying, we do have a role for oversight. Rod Rosenstein has frustrated that oversight, and we want the documents in seven days. I mean, at the heart of what you are digging for is whether or not there was a political agenda in place to try to disrupt the Trump campaign and whether or not some of these agents Peter Strzok Lisa Page took it upon themselves to try to instigate or set a pretext for investigating the Trump campaign did you get any further down that road today uh, I think both today and yesterday particularly where we got the chance for the first time to interview Peter Strzok we learned a lot more about the ways in which the bias not only existed but it actually manifested in investigative decisions. The inspector general, a Democrat appointed by Barack Obama, even said that he could not rule out bias as the reason why the Hillary Clinton investigation was pushed aside and the Donald yeah. Trump Russia investigation was elevated beyond what the facts would have called for. Yeah, so, so the main question is whether or not these agents tried to figure out a way to sort of poke holes in the campaign, mm -hmm. the Trump campaign, to kind of put feelers out there and see if they put out that bait, would anybody bite? Would they say, you know, oh, sure, I'd love to hear some dirt on Hillary Clinton, and that possibly it's even been suggested that they would then be entrapped in a situation where it appeared that they were doing something wrong. Is that what you believe happened? That's what the documents will show. Today, when I asked Rod Rosenstein if there was any intelligence collected on the Trump campaign before the George Papadopoulos report, yeah. he would not answer that question. Now, if the answer was no, he could have clearly said no. Instead, he said it's classified, which seems to suggest there's information there. There was intelligence collected on the Trump campaign, and, and that would indicate whether or not this was entrapment or baiting of some kind for political purposes. So what do you do next to get the answers to those questions? The question is whether or not our leadership, now having 
haven't heard from the entire House of Representatives on this question will say either the documents show up or we start the impeachment proceedings of Rod Rosenstein. And what about the president? Is there more that he could do? Well, you know, the president's in an awkward position here because I think the bias is reflected against him. The president could declassify documents from before the Papadopoulos report, uh, and that would tell us whether or not there was spying or intelligence collection on the Trump campaign, and I've encouraged the president to do that. We saw Trey Gowdy encouraging them to come to some conclusion or to present evidence if they have it. What is your sense of the Mueller time frame right now? Well, we don't know it, and that's what's so troubling. I mean, we're almost two years into the Trump presidency. My goodness, if there was evidence of collusion, I think the country should see it. Unfortunately, uh, now we've got a circumstance where so many Americans are in doubt, but fewer and fewer. Latest CBS poll shows more than half the country does not approve of how Robert Mueller is, is handling the investigation. More than half the country also believes that the Mueller investigation is politically motivated, not based on the facts. We'll see what uh, Mr. Mueller comes up with and how it was it was carried out. Good to see you, Congressman. Hey, thank you, you very much. you did a great much. job moderating oh, that debate. I think my man Ron DeSantis did a great job. It was an interesting night. We'll see how it plays out. Good to see you, sir. All right. Enforcement, 60 seconds. You can't get a better response time, and it looks like they saved a lot of lives. All right, we turn to our opening monologue, and we'll start with today's huge showdown on Capitol Hill. The Deputy Attorney General Rod Rosenstein, the FBI Director Christopher Wray, appearing before the House Judiciary Committee, where they were absolutely grilled by members of Congress. It was a beatdown. We have so many highlights to bring you tonight, including the worst moments from the very short time tempered, extremely pompous Rod Rosenstein, who I'm told doesn't like me. Now, the deputy AG is continuing to obstruct the U.S. House of Representatives and their subpoenas in its efforts to check and do their constitutional duty and investigate actions by the FBI and the DOJ. Now, House Republicans are fighting back hard. Contempt, impeachment tonight is very much on the table. And also tonight, America's left is ramping up, as I predicted, their disgusting rhetoric, political tactics ahead of the 2018 midterms, and some are actually trying to forcibly shut down immigration and custom enforcement offices across the country. Others are calling for the complete abolition of ICE. Meanwhile, many in the media, well, as we also predicted, a full mental psychotic breakdown over the news that Justice Anthony Kennedy has retired. Now, it's been a very bad week for Democrats. Sit tight. We've got all of this and so much more, and we're following all the details out of Annapolis, Maryland, in our breaking news opening monologue. So for over a year, House Republicans have desperately been trying to conduct what is their constitutional oversight duties and properly investigate how the FBI and the DOJ handled, well, really mishandled, the Clinton server investigation. We know she committed felonies. We know she obstructed justice. And also the ongoing Russia collusion witch hunt and the FISA abuse lying to FISA court judges to spy on an opposition party candidate in an election year. Now, sadly, their efforts, their document requests, their subpoenas, they have been met with nothing but obstruction and hatred, antipathy, and animus from the deputy AG, who has a bad temper, Rod Rosenstein. And today, some of these House members had a rare opportunity to hold Rosenstein accountable right to his face. And it started with this powerful opening statement from House Judiciary Committee Chairman Bob Goodlatte. Take a look. The recent Inspector General's report revealed bias in the top echelons of the FBI during a hotly contested presidential election. It revealed that FBI agents, lawyers, and analysts held profound biases against then-candidate Donald Trump and in favor of his opponent, Hillary Clinton. It is right out of a novel with salacious, unverified dossiers, reports of informants that appear more like spies for the U.S. government, and application of the aforementioned surveillance powers to collect on a U.S. person once associated with President Trump's political campaign. But it's not a novel. It's real life real life. Now, next, the very ill-tempered Rod Rosenstein, who, again, apparently doesn't like me. I can't imagine why. He was grilled by Ohio Congressman Jim Jordan over Rosenstein's blatant effort to hide important information from House investigators. Again, this is their constitutional job at oversight, separation of powers, co-equal branches of government. Look at this tense exchange. It's amazing. Why are you keeping information from Congress? Congressman, I am not keeping any information from Congress that it's appropriate. In a few for minutes, Mr. Rosenstein, I think the House of Representatives is going to say something different. 
I don't agree with you, Congressman. I don't believe that's what they're going to say. And if they do, they'll you be mistaken. I disagree, mistaken. but I think, be I think in a few minutes, the House of Representatives is going to go on record saying you haven't complied with requests from a separate and equal branch of government that you haven't complied with subpoenas, and you got seven days to get your act together. I think that's what's going to happen in a few, and that's just, not, that's not Jim Jordan. I think that's the House, I think that's the majority of the House of Representatives. In just a few minutes, I think that's going to happen. And I want to know why you won't give us what we've asked for. Sir, I certainly hope that the, your colleagues are not under that impression. Uh, that is not accurate, sir. And you it can, is accurate. We have caught you hiding Mr. Information, Chairman, can we Mr. allow the witness to answer? Following that exchange, the House did, in fact, pass a resolution demanding that Rosenstein comply with the document requests in seven days or they do face the possibility, first, of contempt and even impeachment. And by the way, the president can demand at some point everything be handed over and that will then be a matter of law. Now, in terms of the president has that power. One of the issues at play here, the House investigation into possible coordination between the Clinton campaign and the FBI's initiation of that so-called Trump Russia, which we now know to be witch hunt. One of the small part of the scandal surrounds Bruce and Nellie Orr. Look right there, 2016, Nellie was conducting the op research for the Clinton campaign, remember Fusion GPS, right alongside ex-foreign spy, foreign national Christopher Steele, Visa Fusion GPS, all while her husband Bruce, a high-ranking DOJ official, was the federal government's point of contact for the same Christopher Steele. Now, Rod Rosenstein is saying he was totally unaware of the connection. Really? I don't believe that. Take a look. You said earlier Bruce Orr was not working on the Russia investigation. Let me ask you, here's my the, knowledge. To your knowledge, did you not know that Bruce Orr was meeting with Christopher Steele, getting information about the, the dossier and supplying that information to the FBI at the same time his wife Nellie was working for Fusion GPS that was helping Hillary Clinton. Did you not know he was doing that for the FBI? Correct. You did not know that? Correct. Okay, so he officed a couple of doors down, but you had no idea that he was actually the go-between to get that information. Another key question was asked by Florida Congressman Ron DeSantis, and it's a question we have now been asking right here on this show for months. Why hasn't Rod Rosenstein recused himself from the Mueller witch hunt? Now, notice a lot of what you're hearing tonight should be recognizable to you because we have been reporting this for a long time and it was all true. Take a look. You appointed Mueller, you're supervising Mueller, um, and it's supposedly about collusion between Trump's campaign and Russia and obstruction of justice, but you wrote the memo saying that Comey should be fired, and you signed the FISA extension for Carter Page. So my question is to you, seems like you should be recused from this more so than Jeff Session, just because you were involved in making decisions affecting both prongs of this investigation. Why haven't you done that? Congressman, I, I can assure you that uh, it were appropriate for me to recuse, I'd be more than happy uh, to do so and let somebody else handle this, but it's my responsibility to do it, and uh, all I can well, tell how you, does it, Then how do you have obstruction of justice possibility for a president exercising his powers to fire an FBI director that you said should be fired? And oh, by the way, the IG report makes it clear, Jim Comey should have been fired. So why are we still doing this with the Mueller probe? Sir, I am not commenting on what is under investigation by the Mueller probe, and to the best of my knowledge, neither is Mr. Mueller. And here we are, finally, 407 long days into Mueller's fishing expedition. Congressman Trey Gowdy, South Carolina, confronting Rod Rosenstein with what we've all been thinking. Watch this from today. Russia attacked this country. They should be the target, but Russia isn't being hurt by this investigation right now. We are. This country is being hurt by it. We are being divided. We've seen the bias. We've seen the bias. We need to see the evidence. If you have evidence of wrongdoing by any member of the Trump campaign, present it to the damn grand jury. If you have evidence that this president acted inappropriately, present it to the American people. Uh, there's an old saying that justice delayed is justice denied. I think right now all of us are being denied. Whatever you got, finish it the hell up.
because this country is being torn apart. Finish it the hell up. That's right. Bob Mueller, Weissman. Oh, Jeannie Ray, are you guys watching? what you've done to the country, what you're doing to the country. Now, Rod Rosenstein, really? When does this witch hunt end? And Rod, it's your constitutional duty, checks and balances, co-equal branches, to provide members of Congress with the subpoenaed documents and information they need so they can do your job, their job and check your department. In seven days from today, if the DOJ continues this obstruction, I urge every single member of the House to now take action to, yes, move to contempt and, yes, impeachment. Enough is enough. Trey Gowdy was right. And of course, many Democrats are just perfectly fine with DOJ obstruction. Their friends in the deep state have a lot to hide. Now, meanwhile, as Robert Mueller's witch hunt is producing literally zero evidence that the president ever did anything wrong, well, the people on the left, they are now predictably beginning to unravel. And their favorite new target, the U.S. Immigration and Customs Enforcement Agency that's doing the jobs that Congress passed, their laws. Now, throughout the week, hundreds of left-wing protesters, they, quote,